In September of 2019, a small team of chefs, mixologists, and designers set out to open a restaurant for one night only in a coastal defense fort built during the American Revolutionary War. Driven by a shared desire to create authentic experiences, they'll combine delectable local cuisine with the handcrafted legacy of Roca Patron. Together, they're going... I'm looking for music. My background is in theater. I've been performing, I've been in theater, I've been doing shows basically my whole life. It's people work, that's what I do. I have been working customer service, I've been working front desks, I've been working reception desks all over Miami. I was having disingenuous interactions with people on a daily basis. And I didn't want to fake it anymore. So I started working in bars. We met here at Hugo's. Andrew was the chef de cuisine at the time. I was hired as a fish cook. And our other partner, Arlen, was a general manager. Started doing Lord of the Rings trivia in the kitchen and got made fun of by our boss about that quite a bit. That was really the beginning. Neither of us speak. <laughs> We're both kind of dilettantes, really. We know the movies well, but yeah, yeah we can't yeah. talk Silmarillion or anything like that. We really try to be as hyper-seasonal and as hyper-local as we possibly can. So, I mean, it, it does make it a little bit difficult when you're looking two months away and saying, okay, what's going to be in season? The reality is you don't know. We are a little strange and maybe a little impractical. The degree to which we just believe in improvisation. Probably a third of the menu or even a half of the menu changes with a ton of frequency at even tide. We do really try to keep it super flexible. It can create a lot of challenges for our chefs when 40 pounds of swordfish belly come in unexpectedly, and, but we enjoy that challenge. There are certain rules and once you understand them, it's much easier to go down different paths. My partners, they really embrace that. What they've done with food is stuff that I would never even imagine. Like using an animal as the vessel for delivering something really is just it's shocking to someone. It's like, are you, can you do that? Are you allowed to do that? Well, yeah. Breaking away some of the formalities of fine dining, but still giving someone the fine dining experience. For us, dining in the outside is really a way to like ground you. We are always rushing and inside often. Being outside in these beautiful areas, spending time with our neighbors and strangers and friends just felt right. And Portland, Maine is just known as being one of the best food cities in the country. It's small, it's quaint, so charming, gorgeous right on the water, and the food is incredible. The community here is pretty tight-knit and it's welcoming. Two blocks away is some of the best seafood in the country. Most of my career I, I spent with the Iranian caviar monopoly. And then when that ended, I started working for the Japanese. And then they sent me up here to do sea urchins. At the time, my password was UGOTW, Urchin God of the World, because I was moving more urchins than anybody on the planet. Now I wholesale fish to a lot of the best restaurants in Portland. I got involved with Eventide. They'd order three tablespoons of this and two tablespoons of that. <laughs> That's an old joke because they were like, I need one fish. Really? One fish? Now we've become like a gourmet capital of the Northeast. I really appreciate these food artists for what they do and how creative they are and what they've brought to Portland. It's better for everybody. We're dealing with mood and fantasy. We're not just dealing with ingredients and booze. I always tell people I don't serve drinks, I serve people. And so I try to get a feeling for what kind of flavors they like first, but also what kind of day they're having, what their mood is, abstract things. 
and replicate that with flavor. When you're in it, it's just kind of like riding the wave. It's like, why wouldn't I be doing this? And why wouldn't I be challenging? Why wouldn't I be doing things that are, are different than the norm? And that's one of the things where we're really pumped about working with Secret Supper is we're in the middle of a spot that has never really been touched before like this. And we're gonna take what we do there. Secret Supper and Patron going together really made sense to us. We have this shared ethos of wanting to give back and, and to gather people around this celebration of food and drink. With that, I think comes this responsibility, especially doing what we do, which is basically opening a restaurant for the night. We try extremely hard to have everything reusable, brought in. Typically, we only generate one tiny little bag of trash. And same with Patron, they do the same thing. They're recycling their water, composting everything back to the earth, giving back to the community. Next line with red wine, a shot of whiskey, and two fingers of something sticky. I'm doing the best work I've ever done in my life because I let go of that idolization of spirits. When we just rely on what our mouth is doing, we forget all the other things that we have available to us. I would taste spirits by, by literally touching them with my hands, rubbing them between my hands, my fingers, feeling viscosity, feeling for oiliness, feeling uh, for alcohol, like astringency, like you can feel these things. Broca I love because it has all those earthy kind of like notes that you get from that Tahona process. There's no hiding ingredients. You're wanting to take flavors that are distinctive and floral or vinegar notes or fruit notes and it's not to hide the spirit and it's not to cover up the food but working side by side two complete experiences that work together. Cocktails have always played a big role in all of our establishments. The way we enjoy them is still thinking about the balance like we do with food. We love having things that make sense and give people joy and that they can come back to with consistency and quality. My mother's fond of saying that I was born with a horseshoe up my ass, which is some Irish euphemism for being lucky. But I feel like we were so lucky that we came to Portland, that we opened Eventide when we did. It's a great spot to live, it's a great spot to cook. We have a wonderful community of people. Mm -hmm.